All right, hey everybody, welcome back for another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video. I'm Matt, and today uh, I'm just going to be showing off some testing that I'm doing. I have yet to test this, uh, but I figured if I'm going to be testing it, I might as well hit the record button. Uh, I just uh, downloaded Flight Simulator, uh, the new uh, beta uh, version 1.27.21.0. Uh, I think it came out yesterday, and we're just uh, checking to see how it performs. Uh, I've had a spreadsheet that I've kind of been using to track uh, some of the different settings that I uh, was playing around with, with how many pop-out panels I have, my triple monitors, my gray background panitor panels that I use in uh, Air Manager, my Air Manager panels themselves, uh, and then if I'm running OBS, if I'm running Zoom so that uh, you can see me in OBS, if I'm running Let's View so that you can see my map in OBS, uh, head tracking so that I can enable head tracking and pan my camera around. Um, so with all that stuff running in the background, uh, right now I have graphics set to high and I'm on uh, DLSS balanced settings. Uh, so I'm just kind of getting some benchmarking numbers to see what it looks like on the ground here at JFK with few clouds. Uh, and then once we take off, uh, we'll see how we're doing. We'll fly around New York and uh, see if Sim Update 10, uh, the beta version uh, that's set to be released here pretty soon, uh, see if it can handle all of these background tasks, tasks running uh, on high graphic settings without crashing to the desktop. So you're seeing it live, and uh, let's get started here. So power's coming in. Taking off of runway 31 here. Airspeed's at 40. 50, rotate. So we're looking at frame rates around 15. Hasn't crashed on us yet. So it's definitely not super happy with this. If I rock the wings, there's definitely a little bit of a noticeable lag. As soon as I stop rocking the wings, that lag goes away. So right there I can see a noticeable lag. says I'm limited by GPU. Oh, now it's bouncing back and forth between GPU and main thread. So we'll go out to uh, the city. We'll uh, do a couple laps around, see what it looks like. Then I'll lower the graphic settings down, and then we'll come back to JFK and land and see if we can get any better improvement at a lower graphic setting. We're still around 18, 19. So when I flew this before having OBS, Let's View, um, Zoom, all of my background tasks running, I was seeing closer to 30 frames per second. So I'm thinking all those background tasks that allow me to uh, stream this, I think it's costing me about 10 frames or so, which is kind of a bummer. Doesn't look like enabling head tracking hurts the frame rate too bad. It's a good sign.
So I think at these settings I could fly just about anywhere on the map. If I can do New York City, I can do anywhere on the map at this high setting. But depending on whether or not the system crashes on me when we start flying through the city, if I'm flying in congested areas, I might not want to fly using high graphic settings. I might want to drop it down. I use few clouds as my test weather. I really haven't been uh, using the simulator much, but when I see a new update comes out, I boot up the computer or download the update and just see if uh, performance has improved at all. The last update I had done, I, I did just in the hour or so that I was testing it. I was getting a bunch of crashes to desktop. I haven't seen this version crash yet, which, uh, which is a good sign. And right now at 20 frames, we're pushing it pretty hard. So between turning and in between buildings and head tracking this should be a pretty uh pretty good test it's definitely not happy hasn't crashed though, that's a good sign. So it looks like in the city here, we're anywhere between 15 and 20 frames. As soon as we start turning, it dips down to closer to 15 if we enable head tracking. Kind of same thing. Head tracking pushes it a little harder. As soon as we poke our heads out here, we'll pause it. Let's uh, drop the settings. So I'm going to go down to medium, but then I'm going to bring these guys up to 100 still. The terrain and objects level of detail. Let's see. Generally, if I'm going to get a crash, this is where I get a crash. And that's one. Let's try two. All right, no crash. Okay, let's try a turn. Okay, 
So now we're up above 20, which is good. It does feel, yeah, 25. It does feel smoother. Even looking out at the city, we're above 25. So this would be, if I'm flying in New York or a populated area, this would be the setting I go with. Just because it's much, much smoother. But that said, we haven't been between the buildings, so let's see what happens here. So not... Mm, yeah, so we're still down to 15 or so. I feel like we're seeing 15 less often now. And as soon as we take our heads away from the buildings, we immediately go back above 20. Pushing the guts out of this airplane. is always a good time. <laughs> See if we have any uh, better frame rates coming in for a landing. So coming back in, should be talking to Newark, 127.85, let's see if that's what, uh, try that, 127.85. Let's see if that's what uh, Microsoft agrees with. Uh, they say 120.8. Which I think I saw that was the alternate frequency on here. No, but we'll go with it. And 
that's what it takes to crash it. Come on. Nope. There it goes. So, uh, I guess we don't get to see what a landing into JFK looks like. Uh, but what we did learn is that if you ask for a menu item to pop out, uh, the simulator's not happy with it. So, I think we're still pushing the simulator a little harder than it wants to be pushed while we're uh, recording on, on uh, OBS and running all this background stuff while flying through a populated area like New York. So uh, we might not be able to uh, record that kind of that kind of content if we're flying in super populated areas uh, if it's not stable in the sim. So that's the takeaway. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.